As you travel the countryside, you see something ahead of you. A goblin tending to a fold-out table with a large sack behind them. They look bored but quickly spring to life as they catch you walking by. Do you approach? Sure, let's see what they got. You approach the goblin. They greet you and ask you if you'd like to see their wares. Sure, what's their name? What? What's their name? The goblin merchant. Uh, Bob. Bob? Boblin. The goblin's name is Boblin. Yes. I want to roll insight. Uh, against Boblin? No. The DM. Uh, wait, uh, uh, actually. Natural 20. Can he do that? Boblin, how'd you get this far out? The nearest town is three days away. Uh, they walked. All this way? Carrying that large sack? <laughs> How many adventurers come this way to justify this? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, I sincerely hope you aren't in the situation where you're mid-session and you need help with improvising your way out of a corner. That would suck super hard, and I can't imagine the embarrassment. You need us to give you a minute? No. But in any case, you're here to learn about improvising. So, here we go. Improvisation is a form of entertainment where the actor portrays a character or scenario based off of a singular prompt. Improv often comes in the form of problem solving, especially out of the box thinking. For this video, however, we're going to focus on improvisation of scenarios. Improvisation is the art of make shit up as you go. It's not knowing the answer, but answering anyway, because a funny but wrong answer or an unexpected answer is far more hilarious than no answer at all. It's spitballing scenarios to yourself saying, maybe the goblin is super strong, or maybe the goblin lives in the sack. With improv, less is always more, especially when starting out an encounter. The players don't need Bob Ross style paintings of the landscapes they're exploring. At most, a two to three word description of the visuals. Flat green plains, a dark forest, what kind of trees are in the forest? I don't know, birch, pine, oak, doesn't matter. The less players know, the more you can make up. Cause guess what? It's your world. If you say apples taste like oranges and oranges taste like boots, that's canon. Applying improv to the goblin merchant example, maybe the goblin's sack is magical and it can shrink or grow on command, making transportation easy. Or maybe in the forest behind the goblin, which was always there, wink wink, there's a small clearing just big enough for their trained owl bear who carries his sack to rest in the shade. This is only one scenario though, an improv can find itself nearly anywhere, but there is some predictability in chaos. The most likely place you will have to improvise is wacky scenarios that your players get their characters into. Most recently, I had a character, a furbolg bard with amnesia. I told my DM about my character and their amnesia and they wrote that I had previously been the brother of a famous bard, but I had lost my memory when I traveled. I decided on my own that this forgotten personality would be vengeful, having been trapped inside themselves for nearly 15 years. I wanted to surprise my DM with this and I kept it to myself until the time was right. Eventually, I said the character demanded the party to help the original personality get the new one out, and if the party refused, my character character would sell both their souls to the gods to make the party's life hell. Everyone agreed that it was a great role-playing moment, and the DM was surprised, but also had zero plans for what to do with my character at that point. And reading this in hindsight, I realized how much of a f***ing asshole I must have seemed like. Cause yeah, that's some shit a f***ing asshole would do. After some in-character discussion, the party decided to give my character a new body, while ensuring the other personality wouldn't go too crazy by trapping their soul. I didn't plan this ahead of time at all. It was a heat of the moment decision because I thought it sounded cool, but my DM had no idea about this either, and because of that, it put them under a lot of new stress to suddenly create this scenario for my character to get a new body. They even messaged me to warn them in advance about wanting to do anything major like this in the future, which I happily agreed to because I recognized, you know, maybe I was kind of being an asshole. Maybe I had main character syndrome and just wanted my character to be 
pretty cool for a little bit, which is another topic entirely that I might talk about in a future video. This is one scenario though, and each DM will run their games differently from one another. One DM might have kicked me out, another might have said it was a great creative exercise. My personal advice? A heads up always helps. Don't be an <coughs> asshole. The point is, improv can be used by both DM and party, and most times, this improv works in both parties' favors. However, there are scenarios where improv needs to stop and story needs to kick in to keep the session going. Going back to the goblin merchant example, sure, their sack might enlarge or shrink on command, <laughs> shush, or they might have an owl bear to carry the sack, but that's where the improv should end, especially if the goblin merchant isn't the focus of the session. Sure, it's fun to think about how the goblin got that sack or where the owl bear came from, but those aren't necessary questions to ask to continue the plot. You are allowed to tell your players to circle back and focus on what's happening versus what happened to get here. The goblin merchant is here and they have items for sale. What does goblin have for sale? You don't know? Come on, man, I'm really trying here. Well, that's unfortunate, but an easy fix. Improv won't solve every problem, even though we would love it if it could. And without experience, it's hard to improvise what merchants are selling. You could just ask the party what they want, but they don't always know what they want or even what they need. It helps to have pre-generated lists full of random items that can be sold by merchants. There's tons of lists online of rollable tables that you can use to randomly determine what the goblin might pull out of their sack. Literally find a random table under the guise of the goblins searching their sack. <laughs> Shut up. And roll some dice on that table. Maybe they pull out... Two healing potions, each priced at five gold. Or... A scroll of mage armor. These items don't need to have a theme to them either. They don't all need to be magical. One of the things goblins are most notorious for in D&D is being raiders, wild ones at least. They take what they can get and keep everything they find, including funny looking sticks and strange vials of green juice. What does the stick in the vial do? I don't know. And that's the best part. You don't have to know every outcome. Most times the party will make things up too. This is where listening to your party is also important. Improvising with your party can take your session to somewhere you may not have planned or even outlined, but that's why having an outline is important. Outlines allow room for improvisation to occur, which is honestly half to two-thirds of what most D&D &D games are. The DM just making shit up as they go. If you watched my previous video, this might sound familiar, as it's pretty close to the save or suck path, mainly leaning towards the suck side. It's possible to run sessions off of improv entirely, but there is a fine line to walk between playing D&D &D with no plan and sitting around a table shooting the shit with your friends. Yes, there's a difference. It's important to keep the session within a framework or keep the party focused on the main goal. Trailing off too hard will lead your party into nowhere eventually, and you, as the DM, into burnout. The easiest way to combat burnout or path to nowhere is following a set outline for what the party should be doing. One thing you could do is set conditions in the meta for new quests. Rather than leveling up and obtaining new quests to match the party level, instead the party finds goals throughout the world that can be completed in any order and act independently of each other, or they could act in tandem, having one quest affect another or all of them affecting each one. All of these goals must be completed though to pass to the next major goal. Quests working in tandem also could lead to some great improv for your party. Maybe the party was on a quest to clear a bandit camp for a local leader who will exchange the job for some information. During the encounter, a party member almost dies being brought to zero hit points and only being helped by the party. Already right there are tons of opportunities for improv. Maybe now that character grows disdain for the person that shot them down, or attachment to the character that brought them back from the brink. Referring to the former, Perhaps that same bandit appears later in another base. Depending on player action, maybe that bandit, having survived combat, is deemed the most experienced and is promoted to leader and now leads the camp against the party that killed their friends. Now there's a whole subplot happening, all because of one combat encounter. That's improv. But what about mechanical improv, where the players want to do something that isn't covered by rules like using a duck as a flail? Honestly, this is an individual effort thing that I can't teach, and something you'll need to workshop with your players. You could say a duck is an improvised weapon and thus falls under the rules of the same name. Or you could say a duck is a single use weapon that can either be used in melee combat for 1d6 bludgeoning damage, or as a ranged weapon for 1d4 piercing damage. Why piercing? Ducks have teeth and claws. I don't know. It's your campaign. Maybe they have sharp bills like spearheads. Maybe there's a whole subrace of duck in your world that's called spear bills. 
Shit, I gotta start writing this nonsense down. Hold on a second. You could also say that the duck explodes on impact from the pure force of hitting someone, leaving the other person blinded for a round as they have to wipe the blood and guts off their face. Maybe the character earns the name of Duck Beater. That needs to be explained every single time. That you don't beat ducks, you beat people with ducks. But neither exactly sounds good. That's Improv. To better expand on mechanical improv, it mostly lies to the ruling of the dungeon master. And this is where the handy dandy tool of rule of cool truly comes into play. You can either make a call against the established rules for a special moment and allow the players a truly epic moment with their character, or you can ask the players for suggestions on the outcome of a scenario. You gather a consensus on what makes the most sense to everyone and use that call as the ruling for the scenario. There is real power in group votes and you will learn this as a DM. There's also simple mechanical improv, where a player might want to do something not planned for, but it sounds awesome. A player might say, I shoot the barrel closest to the bandit so they explode. You ask them the roll, and another player might ask if the barrels are explosive. My personal ruling is, if the players ask if it's explosive, or they think it's explosive, with obvious exceptions, it's explosive. Maybe the character noticed a thin ring of gunpowder at the base of the barrel and took it as indication of explosives. Or, I don't know, maybe it's video game logic and the barrel is red. The main focus of improvisation is making the most fun out of the least amount of context, based purely off the knowledge you possess. That being said, an easy way to learn improv is learning new things and practicing storytelling to yourself, calling on your experiences in real life to better portray a character. Sure, maybe you don't know how to cast actual magic, but you can certainly watch movies and see how it's portrayed. You also don't need to practice skills like archery or potion making to understand how it looks. Learning some random jargon and examining how it actually looks could help with visualizing on the spot scenarios. Or you can just lie and make that shit up. Pretend like you know what you're talking about. This is where confidence is key because it's really hard to bullshit and sound like you know exactly what you're talking about. But it is possible, it just takes practice. Knowing random jargon about the subject does help with your confidence though. It's produced by the modial interaction of magneto-reluctance and capacitive directance. I've always said, fake it till you make it. If you don't know, yes you do. All right, you approach the city and inside you find a merchant selling salt and meats for travelers. He calls out to the party saying you look tired from travel. Maybe some salted duck would brighten your spirits. <laughs> it was one time. 